Hello guys, welcome back to Netcode Hub channel. In this video, it's actually going to be a series. And the topic that we are going to, or the project that we are going to be working on is e-commerce shop. Example is what you see on the screen. Now this, just a simple shop. And um, we haven't finished this yet. This video will be in series because you know e-commerce is a whole lot so we can have just one video for all of these so what I'm going to do here is we're going to put them into series maybe series 1 or lesson 1 and maybe we talk about something we try to develop it so we'll be adding features 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 to the time that we think is okay now this is the initial stage as you can see from here um, we have the page displayed and these are the product that you see here I have actually just eight products here now this is a badge and that gives you a new as soon as you create a project or you insert a product you have a new icon here now this new badge it is there for 30 days period then it's gonna go off you can see we have the price and we have the original price and this is the new price so in case it has the original price and we have original and the new price then we say that it has been reduced to this price not all the products have this reduced attack okay this is also a badge if we check this this icon or this product doesn't have any of the reduced so it doesn't have original price no, sorry, it doesn't have the new price. It has this original price here. And aside from that, we can click on this to go to the details of the project or the product. We can read information about it. Then there's a number of stocks that we have. We can let it is nine. We can add the stock. The number of items the number of this product that you want to buy you see here the minimum is one as soon as i clear this off as soon as i hover the amount it tells me that the value must be greater than or equal to one okay so i can pass in one and i can now hit on the add to cut now if i pass a zero add to cut i have a message invalid quantity provided so we see this is just the initial stage so maybe in this video we try to cover up this and the next series we try to add more features how to add product that is over here how to add product okay so we try to add this and there is an image tag where we can uh, image element where we can input image here and after that we can display this so this is just a simple one that i have here but we will be adding more features to this to add it to the cart and even um making a purchase saving the added cart to the local storage after purchasing being added to the database table okay creating an orders and etc but for now we are going to start with displaying product in this format so let's get going we first have to create a project and we are using web assembly um, project so that's what we are using now so we launch a visual studio and i will try to create a new project as i speak the current version of the dotnet framework that we are going to be using is 7.0 that is the current one as i am recording this video so that's what we are going to um, be using here hello guys welcome back to lesson two we are going to create a project so let's launch a visual studio 2022 and uh, to create a web assembly project we click on file then new project 
And now with the project, we are going to choose Blazor Web Assembly. So that is what we are going to choose for this e-commerce. So Blazor Server, we go for the Web Assembly, click on Next. You give it a name, project name and um, solution name as well. So click on Next. And here we are going to choose the framework. I have from 5.0 up to 7.0. So I am using 7.0. Then we mark, we check configure for HTTPS and also ASP.NET Core hosted. So this feature here get us three projects involved. That is a client section, web API, and a library. So we select that and now click on create. So I have one created already, and you can run on this to or click on this to run the application and that is what you see here so you see from this page there's nothing here sorry there's nothing at this address so we have a project created so what is the first thing to do now in order to speed this up I have the code already so at times I'm not going to start to code one after the other I just have to make a copy of this and I'll just paste it, okay? But I'm going to explain that to you as well. And you can also type it because they are going to be clear and visible. Also, I'll leave this code in a GitHub so you can have access to the code. I'll leave the link under the description. So you can just go in there and I'll grab the code as well. Alright, so let's see the next step to do. Now, once you have application created, let's go there to our solution explorer and now let's create our models so here this is what we are doing in our shared project we are going to create our first folder known as what models so right click the project that says folder add then folder and here we name it as models now after creating that we want to also add one more that is known as a dto now dto stands for data transfer object these are used to transfer data from database to a service through the controller so we are going to create that now in dto we have two aspects we have the request and the response the request is what the client it is sending from the client to the database and the Response is the data getting or gotten from database to the client. So here, but we're going to create just one to hold or to work all our processes um, for us. So let's say in the models, the first thing that we're going to do here, we're going to create a product. So right click on this. Now let's add new class and the name of this class is what product because you know as soon as uh, as far as e-commerce is concerned we have product so product now this class that we are creating whenever it is called it's going for a single or a singular product so one product at a time so all the properties that we are going to specify here are going to base on for one product so when you call this multiple times, it's going to repeat itself to get those multiple products for us. We can clear all this because we don't need this now. So control plus period or dot, remove unnecessary using and you have a simple one. Since we're going to use this um, as this section, client and the server section, then we have to set here as public. The reason why, so let's make this as public. Now, the reason why we are putting this model in the shared project here is as soon as you put it under the shared project, all the code or the source code or anything that is found here can be used by both the client and the server. So, there is a, like a middleman who works at both sides. That's why you put it here. So, we have our product class created. And now, in it, in it let's, let me open this. So we can just copy the code over in there and open. So let's open this. Open with code. 
So let's wait for that to be opened. So I'm sure, yeah, it is here now. Okay, so we are going to copy all this here. And let's go there and paste it inside our product. So these are the properties that we need. Now the first one that we need here is an ID. Since we are going to store the product in the database, it means we definitely need an ID to hold the data or to be used as a primary key as well. So we have an ID and we have name, original price, we have a new price. Then we have a description and we have quantity image. Okay, so this image here, we are going to convert this, the any image to 64 base string. Then we store it under the image section. And we have an uploaded date. Now this uploaded date, we set it to the day that a person uploads the product onto the platform. These are the properties or the uh, properties that we need in this model. Now these are from data notations. Required means you can't skip any, you must provide value. Now you see here we have minimum and maximum let it means you have to type not less than the minimum and not more than the maximum. So that is what we have here. Now quantity defaultly is set to 1. Price it is also set to 0 0.00, that is for new price. And original price here has been initiated to 0 0.52 okay or 51 so anybody that you want to initiate it with you can do that with it now let's save this when we are done the next thing that we are doing here is we have to create the dto so let's create a dto here let's create a folder and name it as so add a new folder and you're going to name this as dto so with this DTO, we are going to create a class known as service model. So right click on the DTO and add new class. And that's going to be service model. Let's click on that. Now let's open this service model and see what is there. So with this service model, this is what we are going to have in there. Let's copy this and let's paste this here. Let's set this to public. Let's clear all these because we're not going to use them. Okay. Now with this service model, we want to hold a variable for a list of products. We want to hold variable for a single product. We have our success. So this is going to hold the success for us. When um, there's a process going on, the outcome, we set this. Defaultly, it is set to true. Now all these values here have initiated. Now this is what now. This is now. Now success is set to true. And we have a CSS class. This default success. We have a message as now. So these are the properties that we want to have in our service model. Now this service model is going to act as both request DTO and response DTO because we're going to use to transport data from the controller from the repository or the service to the controller and to the client um, service as well. Let's save this. And let's close this. So this I think that we need a model that we need for now. Now the next thing that we have to do here after creating our DTO is we're going to work in the server project. So first of all, we are going to create a connection. So database connection. So we go to we can now open our appsetting.json and that is where we're going to create a connection in. Okay. So this is our connection. We have to copy this connection. And now let's go to our project. So this is Explorer. Server project. Upsetting.json. 
and let's paste this so the name for this connection is known as connection string and um, the name that we are having is default connection so this is what you're going to call that is the key and this as you see here it is a value so we have server is called to local because you're using local host the name of the database that you're going to use here it is product db but we can set this into e-commerce demo so e-commerce demo then trusted connection we set to true and trust server certificate we also set this to true you make sure you have comma separated here to make it work let's save this now the next thing that we can do here after setting our app settings our data connection here it is to create our connection file so we need to create a folder known as data in the server project so right click here on the server click on add and now new folder and name it as data when you open the data folder what do we have we have our app db contest so let's open that before uh, once it gets opened that is it right here so let's copy this app db contest let's go in there and create a model as AppDB contest that's going to hold a database connection and a table creation as well so AppDB contest now let's copy what we have here and this AppDB contest is going to inherit from DB contest in order to have our connections and our queries run so DB contest and once you have this we have to create a constructor so by placing this we have a constructor created so that's an app db contest and that's exactly what we see here okay so we have a constructor created now let's see what we can do here now because we have a public class and we have a constructor as app db contest so the same thing here then it is inheriting from DB contest. Okay. And in here, we pass in the, the same class name and they also inherit from the base option class. Now the table that we want to create, the name of the table is called product. This product table in your database is going to use these properties under the product model as a column name so when you go to the product and i said you can see we have id name original price new price description quantity and image and they uploaded date so that's what we're going to use for the table name all right so we can close the connection here and now the name of this connection here is default connection if you actually check under the app settings so this is the default connection as you can see from here that is the name all right now let's get this close and we are done with this so we can also save this and we can close this as well okay now once you are done what you need to do here is you have to register this in the app db uh, that's the program.cs file so we need to register our connections in here so we can perform database migration so there's a connection here so let's copy this connection now let's go to our program.cs file so it's in explorer server project program.cs file and now we can paste this here so if you actually check here, we have builder.services.rdbcontest, we pass in the model that we just created and we pass an optional here and we use an SQL server. 
this use sql server we have to get a configuration from the app setting.json so the name for that is default connection let's check here so we can copy the name of this go to a program.cs file then we can paste this here so it will have a connection here the reason why we're able to use this use sql server here is we have added the package um, nuget package to the application if you haven't added that if you don't know how to add it let's go to solution explorer now the server project right click on dependencies and then go to manage nuget packages make sure you are connected to the internet and in here under the browse tab i have installed them already so i'm going to this place but you haven't click on the browse tab connect to the internet and let's try to download these packages so let's see what we need to download first so first of all you need microsoft the entity framework core so download this or install this into the server project now when you're done you have to install entity framework core.sql server so we have to also install that then entity framework dot tools install the tools as well so that is the packages that we need to install for now so let's close this and now when you're done as soon as you click on this control plus period it's going to pop up this or use the microsoft.nt framework call okay now once you are done with it we can now go ahead and perform database migration so let's click on tools nuget package manager and package manager console let's wait for the initialization to be done so let's see what we can do again can open this okay so let me clear the screen now so let's type add dash migration let's give the name as initials and let's give location as data data folder open it save the my uh, the migration name as migration folder so this is a folder name and that's just going to keep all the migration files that we are going to be generating in the whole project click on the enter and let's wait for the migration to be done so build succeeded now you see it is done and it has now created the table here you have the query in order to run this query we have to update the database so enter and this is going to run this query by identity framework and you're going to generate the table the database name database table for us so we see we have the query and that is the query that it is running so it is done now let's close this click on view and i'm going for sql server object explorer let's wait for it to initialize So that is it over here okay so click on the sql server and the last one you can see from the uh, as your server open it and we need to open the folder called database we need to open the database so as you can see let's open the database folder now we have a list of databases here let's choose the one that we use e-commerce demo that is it open this now open tables folder so we have tables folder open and it is refreshing 
so you okay, see so we have a DBO product right click on this and click on view product so this is going to open a table that the entity framework call created it's going to open that table for us currently that table is now empty table no data no record found so we have ID up to upload a date nothing is found here okay so if you're able to do this it means you're good to go now we have our migrations and all the stuffs and models we are done creating them the next step that we have to do is to create our repository and we're going to talk about that in the next lesson and that's going to be a lesson three thank you guys for watching and um take a break okay and let's also meet the next lesson to continue on by creating our repositories hello guys welcome back to lesson three so this lesson we are going to talk about creating um, product repository in the service or in the server project now what actually is repository people call it many names people say serve it repository and etc but what this actually means here is it is not advisable to put all your code plus your database connection that's a app db context file in the controller so in order to make the controller simple and healthy all the necessary codes or the logics you have to move them to another folder another model and that is what we call as repository or services so with the services we have two states the first one is the interface and the other one is the implementation the interface talk about the function or the method name the implementation talks about the details of the method what the method is going to do so we can say that the interface tells us what is going to happen what that method is going to do but the implementation talks about how that method is going to do it so let's say registration in the interface we have register you know that register is going to register the, the user but in the course of registering what are the mechanisms that are going to be utilized to register it can be found in the implementation so we need to create both because they go hand in hand all right so once we have understood let's go to a server project and create a folder known as repositories you can also name it at servers so a server project right click and now let's add a new folder and this the name of this folder is going to be repositories so repositories now in this repositories I'm going to create two folders in so the first one here is going to be the interface so interfaces and the next one here is going to be an implementation so implementations okay so now we are done now let's open uh repositories so first of all let's open our interface and we have a product interface so let's open this in the code and let's see what we have here so we need to create an interface so let's create an interface and that is what we need to use so let's copy this and let's go to our interface right click click on add new item and let's choose an interface and let's give it a name as i product so we say i product 
So the I stands for interface. Click on add. And I can see this public interface, I product. Let's paste what we have here. So we are getting the tax from the service model. And it is add product. We add a product. That's a new product. We have get product. And this is get product by ID. So only this three method that we are going to be utilizing for now. Add product, get product, and get product by ID. So this is get single product, get all product in the list form, and add product. So when we are done, we can now save this. Control plus S, we save that. Now we need to create the implementation. So instead of the um, I product, we can less I product. Let's say I product, you have it right here. And the next one here, it is product. Okay. So let's add I product. Let's add repo. That stands for repository. So let's rename that. And we have to create another class in the implementation and rename it as product repo. So add, there's going to be a class. And here it's going to be product repo. So this product repository, click on, that is a class, click on add. So in this, you can now go to the i repo we can copy this so let's copy this here let's go to product repo now let's inherit from it so let's paste this now let's click on this control plus period and now let's implement interface so we have the interfaces created so these are the definitions for the method specify in the interface here so these are the methods and these are the method implementation or the method definition so you can now save this so when we have this add new product what are the things that we need to do let's see let's go to our folder and in the implementation let's open this and see what we have under the add section so we first have to create a constructor and inject our app db context so we can copy this here and let's go to application so control plus period here and let's go for generate constructor let's pass in this Control plus period. So let's create an assigned field, second one. So we have this set. So now this connection here has been utilized or initialized now. The next thing that we need to do here is we are going to add product. So in order to add product, this is what we need to use to add product. Let's copy this. Let's go to application and in here we paste this now here is supposed to be async so let's pass in the async okay so we are creating an object out of this service model now this service model contains two models that is a list of products and a single product here we are adding products so we are adding single product now if you check here we create it an object here then we check the model coming in if it is not equal to now if it is now then we're going to say sorry product no um, product object or the project project object here is for empty and the css class is warning and also we set the single product to now okay and success is going to force but in case the product here is not now, then we are going to add 
the database table we save we set the current product to the single product we set uh, success to true we have a response message and a css class then we return in case in the process we have an any error we just try and catch to catch the error here we set the css class danger and the message the me get the message then return the message so that's a simple thing that we are actually doing here let's save this now we can comment this so let's minimize this now let's go to get product by product id so if i pass in product id i have to get this product so let's go to here now the next thing is get product by id so i'm also going to copy exactly the same thing from here so that is get product by id and let's copy this and get product by id2 we're going to paste this here so this is the same thing we create an object here is supposed to be an async so we create an object we check if the id is greater than zero we get through the database and check if we have any value correspond to the product id but we have get a product and store it at a single product set success message and css class return in case it is now we return this to the user when we have any error we try this any error we catch it here and display to the user but if product id is greater than zero if it is not greater than zero it means there's error here then we display this to the user that's also very simple okay so we can now also save this and we can comment this now one last left here is a get product with the get product that is this one so let's also use the same try and catch method so let's copy this and let's go to the code now we just highlight this and paste what we have copied we also create the same response from this service object and this we are going to use an async so we get the whole list two lists we convert it to a list we save it at the product in case it's not equal to now then we set the product list to product then we set the success and the message and css class will return but in case it is now then we set this all these are in a try catch so try block in case there's any error we display the error to the user that is a very simple thing to do we can now save this and we are done with our repository okay so the next thing that we can actually work on is let's see we have to create our controller so let's go to our controllers folder open it let's open the product controller and now let's create a controller here in our project so server project controllers folder right click and i click on add new controller and we're going to name this as so let's copy the name here it is product controller so we can copy this and in here we go for api new mt1 and so we can now paste this here product controller then click on add and that is the controller selected click on add and we have it added okay so what we are doing here is quite simple we have to create a constructor and inject the services and actually this is a service so we need to add that here so we paste this we inject this product interface and that is the product repo so in here we're going to name it as product repo and that's going to be an i product repo 
product and the interface so i product repo control plus period and we need to add the interface folder and the name that we assign here is known as product product repo so we use this product repo okay so we can now copy this and we can paste them image inside the constructor and let's copy this paste them here okay so our constructor is now activated let's save this the next thing that we need to do here is we're going to use this method that's the add product so with the add product that is what we use so let's try to use control plus period let's use um, block method okay so we're using this method so instead of this product interface we're going to use this product repo we copy this and we can paste this here product repo we call this add method in the repo we pass in this new object okay so the next thing that we can do here after having this add product is also to get product so we get a list of all product and the next one that is a route so by getting the list of product control plus period let's use the block method and in here we also copy the same repo we paste it here now the next thing that we are doing is get single product so that is a route that is a route and the HTTP post these are the method or the verbs that we are using so let's see the last one is to get all product that is a that is single product sorry so with a single product we also use HTTP get then get product we have we pass in the product id we specify this to be was uh, specifically integer let's use a block method to so use block method we pass in the product id and i record a method in this product repo that is known as get product and we pass in this product id so it took note this is get products, get all products, and this is get product, get single product. Now we are done. So what we can actually do here is let's try this in the browser. What we can do here is let's install a swatch backup so that we can have the swagger UI. So go to Solution Explorer, right click on dependencies inside the server project, and I click on manage new get package. So under the browse tab, type in this swash buckle. So that's a swash buckle. So let's see. So swash buckle.aspnet swagger. Or you can install this swash buckle.aspnet core. Okay, so install this. And that is what we're going to be using for our project. So install this. And now when you are done, let's close this go to your program.cs file in the server project so program.cs file and now let's add builder.services.addswaggergen so add this method to register the service when you're done let's configure the middleware pipeline so in here we have to use use swagger method and use swagger ui method so these are the pipeline that we are configuring this middleware. So let's save this. And what we have to do here is we have to build the application first. So right click on this and let's wait so we can build the project. Okay, so let's see. Right click and now let's go to build project. And let's see. So we see uh, zero succeeded, zero failed and three up to date. So everything is intact let's run this 
application and see so currently our client section is inactive because there's nothing here but let's navigate to the swagger so swagger and let's see so you see we have all these method add product get product and get product by product id let's click on get a list of product try this out execute this and let's see so we have this it means we have no product here and if you actually check let's close this if you actually check here get product this is the the schema so if it is a list of products we get it over here if it is a single product we get that also over here and these are the other message the response message such as css class and the message that you want to display okay so we have nothing here now let's go ahead and add let's add the product so this is the product now let's click on try this out now id is set as identity column so we need to provide id now name is maybe let's set it as test or let's say shoe uh, shoe wax then the price here is set to 45.99 do we have a new price yes 44.99 now description so very neat pricing box and also can we also add affordable affordable okay now quantity do we have 10 now we don't have image yet so we leave the image over there and that is a date okay that we are adding here so let's click on execute and let's see okay so that is a response here that we have let's copy this and keep this but if you check here they're saying something they're saying that we forgot to add to inject cause this di that is dependency injection so let's use that let's go to this next power server project then program.cs file and now let's use this dependency injection so builder.services dot add scope then with this add scope we pass in i product i product repo and the name or the the implementation is what product repo product repo that's the first one okay then you close this and that is a way to add that is dependency injection so with this you can set this as global so we can use this everywhere so if this is not giving us a chance we can use this as global and we can also use this as global so let's save this save this now let's go to the product repo and you can see we have it over here now this is the iProduct repo we have our product report over here so we have implementation and we have our interface so we can now clear this off since we are using as a global inside the product.cs we can clear that okay so let's save let's clear this as well you don't want to see any unused using so let's save all now let's see so let's go back here and let's try to run this again now let's refresh so we have a ui also ready now let's see so get product 
the first one let's see id1 get let's wait and see the outcome of this all right so sorry products are looking for that exists because there's no product in so let's add try this then let's paste what we have let's execute that so you can see we have the product added and since it's a single product we have it as single product okay success is true css class is what success and message is product added successfully okay so let's try with the get product by id now let's pass an id one execute and I can see we have the data here so it is working now the next thing that we need to do here it is quite simple we need to now create our service inside our client and I'll try to render the data from database to the client so I believe for now we have to be able to get what we have now our controller is now activated we can now get service we can get record from the database by calling a method in the repository and we able to install the swatch backup to use the swagger ui all right so that is it for this half this lesson the next lesson we're going to talk about creating the same service for the client this is for the server the client is going to be discussed in the next video. Thank you for watching. Hello guys, welcome back again to lesson 4. And this lesson 4, we are going to talk about creating client um, product services. And these services are going to render to the client. Now you know that we have the repositories and through the Swagger UI, we can able to access the method that we have created in the controller. The same thing applies to for a client to also access the method, we need a service to render to the client. Uh, so that's what we're going to do in this lesson. That's a lesson four. But before that, if we click on this, you know, with our API that is the UI Swagger UI we can now add as you can see from here that is the schema so these are the things that we need to provide now um, we have added one already when you click on get product ID that is product ID one so when you pass in one we are going to get let's see so you pass an ID one and you're going to get that specific data that we provided as a single product okay since it is get a single ID or a single product now the method or the property that you're going to use here it is a single product and i can see product list here it is now okay now if you check the message it is known as product found now let's try with the get product so before we make this we click on this let's make a slight change here let's go to application now in the controller now you see we have to set a default http get so that let's make this as default let's clear this route so for post you have to go to product add product now for a specific one you go to product then you pass in get product and id but to get everything you don't have to pass in any routes okay so um this is going to get us what you want now let's save this and now we need to refresh application and see what we have now so let's refresh now let's click on product so try it out execute and we have to get all the list that we have so as you can see from here this is a product list now single product here is now now we have only one data uh, one uh, entry so that's what we have over here okay so let's go for the client service so to do that we have to navigate to the client project so let's close the server project and let's close or let's um, hide the shared project as well 
now we open the client project so in the client project what do you suppose to do now we are going to create the service so this service i have here as client service we need the same thing as implementation and um repository so that is the interface so let's see now let's create a folder here right click on this right click on the client project let's add a folder known as services so add folder and the name is services so in these services we're going to create another folder so this is going to be an interface interface services then let's create an implementation services so implementation services okay so with the interface this is what you're going to do we are going to create an interface so right click on the interface and then click on new item and the new item go for interface and as you know we are going to name it as so i product i product service and let's create an implementation class inside the next folder known as the uh, implementation service so let's add that's going to be a class and this class you're going to name it as product service product service okay so what we're going to do here is with the interface service oh so the service is wrong let let me make a change here with the interface services okay so uh, i product services no e there no e over here so all right so we are going to now to speed this up let's open what we have here so in the interface we right click let's open it code now let's see what we have in there okay so we have this three method and now this three method is the same as what we have in the repository because here we are creating the same method so we are encapsulating it over here so we can use so you see we are having the same thing as well over here that's what we are using okay so we have uh, tax add product service product and um, get product and um, get product by id okay now you see that with the server we would access the data through the services or through the repositories which contains the interface and the implementation and we did that in the api um, swagger ui now the client also can also do the same thing as well but this time around is not through the server but rather through a service and get to the controller the controller has to call the repositories and the repository has to fetch it connect to the database and uh, process or perform that task that the client needs that's why we need this to process that work for us okay so this is going to work as a, a connector to the controller so the client gives it it gets to this connector and this connector connects it to the controller and the controller gives it to the repository for it to work it on okay now let's go in there and implement this so in the implementation let's copy this and we go to the product service that's the implementation now here let's inherit it control plus period now we implement the interface okay and we have to create um constructor so let's see what we have here let's go to the implementation and let's open it through the code So first we need a constructor and that's what we need here so let's copy this and let's go to our code so this is a constructor that we need first so here i'm going to copy this product service and replace it here now this we need an http client to render this service to the user and also to send this service to the controller as indicated earlier okay 
so we have we have injected it over here and now we've initialized it here so we can use it http client within the scope everywhere so with add product what you're supposed to do now add here it is a post if you check the controller add is a post method so we have to push it to this method so how do we push it let's see what we can do next now this method is going to help us push to the controller so let's copy this and the post method we pass in this so we first store what is coming in here okay that is over here we store the out output to this that is the product when it's done we store the output here now we are saying that we call this an await so this must be an async so we are saying we post as json async so this is a route api product and add product so that is a route here api product and add product so when you go to controller that is something we have we have the api and the name of the controller that is the product and then the method known as add controller so that's exactly what we have here then we pass in this new object so that is a um an instance of this product model and that's what the user has fit the data with so we pass in now when we are done we are saying we're using post as json async we have to read the content and we call this product over here and read the content here so we read from json async and we read it to this model because you know that this tax is returning a service model which is going to be a, a single product so product coming here is going to be a single product so it's going to set it as a single product and return it to this tax method on top here that's the signature okay so we are done with the add product let's go to the get product so that's a get product by id so with the get product by id this is a method to work on weight let's copy this and let's go to and let's paste it here and you know this is supposed to be an async since we have an await keyword use we store the output as result or it can be a product it can be any name at all okay then there's a route api product get product since we are going to pass in a variable here a parameter here that's why we need to use this dollar sign in order to enable us to perform this if not if i decide to take off this let's see what happens you can see this is not a variable anymore so that's why we have to uh, bring this here to set it as a variable okay then yes we have to return the same we read the results as well and return it so the same thing applies to what we have here now let's go to the last one that's a get all product so get all product now let's check it over there and see so get all product now since we can take off this yeah let's save this here and let's copy this now you see that here we did not perform any route we didn't add any route here so we need not to pass in the route it is just an api and they just an api because it is like http get there's no route here as you can see so it is an api in the controller api controller is in a product so api slash product and you're going to get us this um, get method so uh, that's the same thing that we are doing here api and the product and you're going to return the results to this service model which contains um, product list so this is a list so this also contains a list therefore you can able to accept that okay so that is what we need to do here and we are done with our implementation now what you have to do here is to use implement or use this class these services in the page okay so let's see um let's try to run this and see what happens next so i'm going to save this okay so this has been refreshed now right click and go to inspect element now you can see when the page loads we have um home and there's nothing here sorry 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 it is just a train that is making that noise okay so you see we have um the home here but you see we have nothing here because the service that we have created we haven't called it yet we haven't utilized it so let's utilize it over here 
so we're going to do that maybe in the next video and we're going to talk about creating um, the page but before that let's call dependency injection so let's call a dependency let's create a dependency injection so we do that in the program.cs so under the client section program.cs file and you have to do that so let's see what we have here so we can do same now this is the program.cs um, let's open that open with code and let's see what we have so we need to use this that's the program.cs file so we have to add scope put that services.add scope so let's do exactly what we see here and that's going to be builder dot services dot add scope and this is going to be i product i product service and the instance here is product service you close it and that's all so we are done all right so that is it uh, thank you guys for watching this video and hopefully i'm going to catch you up the next lesson that's going to be lesson five creating a product list component to render the services known as get product all right guys welcome back to lesson five now in this fifth lesson we are going to talk about creating the razor component for the client now we have everything done underground so um it is done well fixed but the client can't have access to when you load the page you see nothing but just this loading icon okay so how do you render the service how do you call the service that we have created um through the client page so the client can have access to by displaying their list of products going to product details and etc adding products and many more let's get into it so um let's see now this is the page that we have if i right click on this click on inspect element uh, let's see what i have here so console and it is called a dependency injection so let's refresh this this is solved by creating the dependency injection so maybe we can run this again so this is a dependency injection that we have we created now you see this um i product service so this also can be i product service that's why we have the error it's supposed to be a product service okay so control plus period let's inject this product service and let's see what happens here okay so it is done now let's save this and let's see so it's refreshing So let's wait while it's refreshed so we see um we don't have now we still have the same so interface um client service so one or more error occurred cannot instantiate implementation type client service interfaces product service for a service type interface um, product service so let's see the reason why we have this let's see now because we have i product service and we have product service okay so not product services rather product service so this is i product service and this is product service yeah so this is i product service and this is product service okay so let's clear this control period now inject this implementation and let's see i product service i product service and that is this i product services okay so i product services and this is product service let's inject this this product service i product services so do we actually have 
I product. So there's a name, right? So let's go in here. So public interface. Okay, so here there's a mistake here. And the name for this is I product service. By the interface is product service. So let's see services interface and the name is i product service so this is the name and this is the interface opposed to i product service let's save this then when you go to the product service it has inherit from i product service okay so now let's save this and let's go to the program.cs file and let's see i product services so control plus period and let's use service interface and yeah yeah so let's save this let's set this as a global and see so global you have any error in it global directive must proceed on and global using so let's cut this let's put this on top okay so put that service let's see okay so now it is working okay all right so now let's see let's refresh again now it is loading and that error is going to go off so you can see we are not having any error anymore okay so let's go to the product list and here we are going to straight to the pages folder we're going to create product table but that's the product component and this product is going to display all list of products so let's open it code and now in here so with it let's see Let's go to our pages, right click on the pages and let's add a new razor component and the name is product. So let's add it as product dot razor, add it. So let's see now the component is now being added. Let's wait while it gets added. And in that, this is what we need to use. Okay, so actually, let's make it step by step to get it. So first of all, we are going to check. So if the model is empty, then we're going to issue this. Okay, so let's see what we have to do first. And before that, we have to work on here. So with the code, I can just copy this code here. And let's see so our page is ready so i'm going to paste this here good and what you want to set here let's make this as the page directive this is going to be the default page okay so this test is not important for now now this is a service model that we have control plus period this is a service model and we are having we are calling the override initialize async so to get this you can now type in override and i hit on the tab key you want and that's the space bar and let's see the pop-up here so let's go back again so let's save what we have here let's save this first let's save this let's close this product let's reopen it okay so now con let's control plus period service model let's inject using this so instead of using this you can now cut this and i'll go to the import.razor and i'll put all usings in so we can use it globally so we pass it here let's go back to the razor and this is going to go off okay so and let's see what we want to do here is type in the override and the space bar and let's see good so you can see we have uninitialized async 
and that is over here this is uninitialized and we have we have async already so that's why we are not having that the async there okay so click on that and it's going to get you this this one to waste our time control period let's see control and period okay let's still use that so we have a service model set so this is the service model that we have created now this contains all things that we need contains a, um, a list and also a single product and now we need to inject the interface here so the interface we're going to use at inject and it's i product services so give it as product services so product service so let's copy this product service and now within this product service we have a method known as get product so we can get the product from here now this is going to return let's see it's going to work for us okay so now it's going to we're going to check for uh now ball so it can be now yeah so we are getting all products here get product so this is a, getting a list of product so this is getting a list of product okay let's save this and now when the page initialize we are calling this method let's save this let's see the method that we are calling so we can know what to do so let's call the method again so let's click on this one now right click on this and go to inspect elements let's see if that method got get for that method has been called so let's see okay so we have this local host and it isn't called yet although it has been initialized but it hasn't been called yet so let's go for our component now in here i put that let's clear this first let's give space here that's what we're going to work in now when you go to our code here the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to check for now so if it is now so you can copy this and in here we can check if service model dot put that list is now okay then so if it is not now then this is what you want to do but in case it is now then this is what you want to do so let's see what we have now in the code if it is not now or when it is now you want to give the test as loading so here we paste this this control k and d is going to arrange it well now this is just a bootstrap class we see we have a container row offset and this md they are bootstrap so this is going to give us a loading icon a spinner but that text so this is a spin of loading now let's save this and now let's see so let's refresh our page and see if the product is now then it's going to load but if it is not it won't load let's see here if a method is called local host do you have any method in okay so now let's see so you can see we have this if it is not now then this is going to work on now what do you know, what do you have to do here is we have to get now let's copy this if it is not now then we are going to loop through we set the header and we loop through this code is going to be available so if you don't want to type it it's uh, it's, it's, good. it's okay okay so i'm going to put a link there so you can download the the code okay so we create um, a row and now this row we just have to say it's a product now we're going to look through the product list we look to this product list as indicated here then we set as you can see from here so we look through now this is going to be the product id this is the product id as an anchor tag then we set the header so day time here we are checking if the new uh, batch if the day time of current day is lesser than the day the person uploaded the product when it added 30 days and it is 
lesser than today's date okay so this today's date is supposed to be lesser than this so if it's lesser than it means that 30 days hasn't reached but when you check and 30 days is being added to this date and this date is and it is greater than this okay or, is, or it is lesser than this meaning that the appeal or the 30 days has exceeded so it means this new icon or this new badge has to go off so we are checking this uh, let's say today's date is what the person uploaded today now when you add 30 days it's going to be the next month next month it is bigger than today but when the next month comes it means when the next month comes it's going to be equal now the next day today's day is going to be bigger than the next next month then this going to this, this will never run because their condition here is going to be false okay and here too we are checking for new price and the original price so if new price is not equal to zero and if the new price is lesser than what the original price meaning it has been reduced then we give this test as we cancel the original price has been cancelled and we we bring their badge as what reduced then we display the current or the new one else then we display if it doesn't have a new price we display the original price here that's very simple we have a footer and this footer is contains on the add cut this is a button and that is all so you see this very simple thing that we are doing it's very simple as well and, and i'm going to leave the source code too so you can grab it let's save this and now let's refresh our page and see what we have now okay so let's see this isn't called yet uh, let's see if this so let's let's see did we set the uh, speed okay so let's copy this I'm going to cut this okay save this and let's go to produce product let's delete this and I'm going to create it again so right click add razor component and this component is going to be product again So products then here I'm going to paste what we have here save this so we can close this for it to get refreshed and open it again products yeah and you have it over here so let's save this and now let's see and I refresh okay so let's run this again so click on this okay so it's now loading right click let's go to inspect element now because you have the loading icon that is when the uh, product is what is now so let's see when you go to network you see we have the method being called let's load it again now let's see here so the method is going to be initialized that's a get product so that's why a product now if i click on this you see we have a product list we have only one product here and the, there's a header so the car host hpi slash product okay so there is the product that we have now there's no image so we have this product and you see we have the original price and this way because the new price it is lesser than the original price if so then we have reduced and if the date is not equal to or it is today's date is lesser than the expiring date we give this new okay so that's all we have beautiful okay so now let's go a place to add now let's go in there and add the product okay so you see here this is what we did we added this manually through the swagger ui by if the client want to add product how possible can the person do it and that's what we're going to do next so the next thing that we need to do here is we are going to so let's close all these talent 
to close all these so let's close all close all tabs okay and let's go to solution explorer now in here we need to create that that is the add product so let's open this we can i can even copy this from here and i'm going to paste it here so paste this that's the one good thing about a blazer you can copy the component from time to time to everywhere now if i click on this to open we are going to let me open this product razor so i can just copy this header so let me copy this let's go to the add product now this add product i'm going to paste this here so we've also added the interface and we are using just an edit form this is very simple we are using an edit form we have a model as new product and when it is submitted we have to handle this we call data annotations by data and validation summary that's to display any error here then if you check here this is just a, a div class for displaying message and now we are adding the css class here so the output coming from the controller that's going to issue the right over here okay now let's see we have the first thing is an input to that that's going to be the name we have this the original price we have new price and if you see the new price i use an input tag html input because i want to set the minimum price and we have the description over here we have the next one is the quantity and this also i use number because i can set the minimum as one then we have um that's the on file change image so to select image we use an input file on change here we call this on file change method and that's also we there's going to be a method that we're going to call and here we need to pass in event input file change event argument okay and that's over here so the next one is a button so that's a create now let's see with the code so the edit form is been, has been closed or is closed here now product is got a new product so control plus period let's inject this product so product we create a product and there's an object so we create an instance of this product now we create there's an upload message as a string we have this message over here and you can see we have a css class so we have these three um, property sets here. Now handle add product. That is when everything works successfully. Handle add product. We call this method when this button is clicked. Now when you handle this product or when this action is or this event is being called, we call the service here and I store the answer to what response. Okay. So this is going to be. Let's copy this here. That's going to be the object out of the instance of the interface so instead of using this client product interface we're going to use this product service interface dot add product because this add product is found inside this product service we pass in this new um that is coming in now we say these are the new and uh, it is here so new dot quantity so it means it is accumulating all the the various properties here and when you are done it passes through this and send it now the response that it is coming in we have message and we have css class so we can we set the message to this message we set the css class to the css class and so when you call so if it is error the css class is going to be warning or danger and that's going to be set here but if it is success the css class is going to be what success and that's going to give us the green background okay so that is it over here now when the next left here is when you try to upload image <clears throat> now with the image you pass in this event argument there's an object out of it we check for file image now we check if the extension is what not equal to jpg we want to upload only jpg files so if it's not equal to jpg then if it contains jpg dot jpg it means that here it is working okay so we set this upload message to now and this is a format so image slash jpg it means we need only jpg now if you want to set to png or um, jpeg whatever that you want 
GIF, we can just set it here as GIF. Okay. And here we resize the image. So we pass in the format. Then we create a buffer of the size. We resize the image by opening the stream and we read the buffer. We create an we create it or convert it to base 64 string. We store it over here as image data. Then we call the object that the image product dot image we set it to the string. So that's the image object that has been created to base 64. Then that's all. Else, when the extension doesn't contain the JPG, we tell the user that the image invites file selected because only JPG file is what needed. Okay, so this means a person can select one image at a time. Maybe you can decide to add multiple images, okay? But that, we're going to do that maybe we can update it feature. But for now, let's maintain only a single image. Once you are done, you can save this. And let's see our page to get refreshed. And in here, the route for this is add product. That is the route. So let's see. This is the add product because when you check here, it is add product. So this is a route. So you can copy this route. And let's see. So this is loading. But let's run this manually over here. Let's close this. And here, you want to pass in this add product. So add product. And that's what we have now. So add a product here. You can decide to put this in the container and design it very well. But for now, let's maintain as it is. Okay. So this product name. But before that, let's choose an image here and see. So if I choose an image, which is let's see this hat right now this hat these are all jpg files let's go to images and do i even have i have one here so let's decide to use and this is a png so if i open this see what happens now let's run this again now you see that it's telling me that the image is invalid so let's see So slash add product. So see, I'm going to start that image again and see what happens here. So invalid image file selected. Okay. Now if I decide to click on this name field is required, image field is required. Now although I have this image field, but it is not stored yet because it is invalid. So if I pass in everything and leave this blank, it will never go. So let's choose a correct one. So go back to the desktop. And now here I have images here. And there I can now go for that is the I want hats. Okay. So maybe I can use this one. And now I have the image here. So the name is let's set it as brown hat. Okay, so brown male hat, and maybe the price of this is maybe 75.99. New price of this is going to be maybe um, 75.89. Okay, so you see that this is lesser, so we're going to have reduced price. Now, I can just copy this as brown male hat, then can say very affordable okay so <clears throat> neatly and also fresh that's a fresh in box so neat and also fresh in box all right so let's edit the description now the quantity that I have here maybe I have 15 let me click on Great. So let's see how it happens here. So we can see product added successfully. Now, when it is successfully added, the CSS class that is coming in here, it is what? Success. So that is it. Now let's go to home. And you can see we have that added over here. And we have this new icon. Reduce and we have this. 
let's add one more whereby with this we are not having so add product this i'm not going to add a new price and let's see what happens here so let's go to the image and let's select not this i'm going to select box so let's see this and this is going to be um women so this um this handbag let's copy this and paste it here um so fresh in box affordable and negotiable as well so delivery is assured okay now um this you're not going to set the new price so here yeah, it is just 120.99 that's the price quantity is one now let's click on create so put that added go to home and i could see that from here since there's no new price there's no reduced price we have this object we have the details here and if you check this is the price okay now if i click on this it's going to put that details then pass in the id now you see this id one this id two and this id three okay so as we have this the next thing that we have to do here is we have to create the product detail component as soon as i click on this it has to open to the product detail and so i can see the details of that product so how do you do that let's see i have it right here so let me just copy this you go to a product pages then i'm going to paste it here product detail now the reason why we are having this is when you go to the product you can see each product has an anchor tag here and it is navigating to product details and passing the product id so this is going to be sent to this um, component and this component is going to have a parameter known as id and this is going to accept the id to that component and process it there let's see so product detailed component is set it is coming in with an id now this i product service and this is product service let's copy this okay so this here it has come in with a single product because it's only one so single product over here now we set also the same thing as we did there's a message to display with the css class here since it is single product we don't look through because it's only one coming in from the single product or single object set inside the service model so here we just check the date and time as indicated and um here we set the name description and if you check here okay original price um new uh, price original price so you see product quantity so it's the same thing that we are doing here okay now the last one here is this we're going to implement it later on that is when the button is clicked to add product to cut then we are going to call this method and we set we pass in this product id so that is what we are going to do but not now okay now when if the product is empty then we display loading when you come down here we have a public uh, that's a public um id sorry public id and that's going to be a parameter because it's going to accept if you check the route it needs a parameter as an id so that's what we have initiated here we set the quantity to one that's the default one indicated here for the quantity this is the quantity we set to one and the next thing that we're doing here this is css class in the message as we did earlier on now you create an object out of this service model by this object here we're not going for product list rather going for a single product we set if the parameter is changed you want to call this await method now if this seems so complex for you control plus period you can use the block one so let's see 
control period want us to use the block one but let's maybe later on we can talk about that now um, we have this get product so we call this method get product and now um, here we paste this product service dot get product okay so let's see control period control period okay now this is add product to cut and now this is just what we have here so message is empty test class is empty now if quantity is greater than or equal to one so it means it is accepted because the least quantity is supposed to be one so if it's greater than or equal to one it is okay if the quantity is less than and equal to the quantity that we have in the database because you can buy let's say i have it two quantities i have quantities of two you want to buy three it's not it's impossible okay so we check it over here so if all these are true then we can now go ahead and add to the cat but if not then we can display invite 20 provided and the sales class here is going to be warning now let's save this and here refresh our page so if i click on this it has to open to this product details so let's see let's run this and see let's wait for this to then we click on this button to run it okay so our lens it is even refreshing itself all right so let's click on this and now put that detail like you can see we have put that details here we have in stock so this in stock we are getting a number of quantities here so 15 now this one is okay so if i click on add to cut nothing happens yet but let's see now if i pass in zero you can see we have value must be greater than or equal to one if i click on add to cut invite quantity provided now if i pass this 15 if i pass in here 16 okay let me pass in here 10 11 this is going to go off because it's, it's accepted but if i pass in here 16 invite quantity provided because this is thing that you are buying it is greater than what we have in stock so if i if i give you the 15 the, the rest the one where i'm going to get it for you i can't so that's where we have to get we have to set this issue okay set this constraint okay so that's it for the product detail is not actually beautiful match yeah, you can de de design it any way that you want actually i am not a designer and um, this is what i could do okay so um can do it more and more Alright, so when you go to pages, what we have, but you can decide to add number of pages here, products here. So let's see. Um, so I can just go off and add these pages, okay? So I'll go off and add a few products here, and um, we are done with that. So you can see we have a displayed home and we have a product list. When you click on it, you can see we have a product details as well, and we can now add. So let's go in there and add the these tools here that is how to add the product and etc now to do that i think i have it here. and that's what i went to bootstrap okay and I, I got this nice button from bootstrap that's going to be a, that's a drop down button so under the shared product or share component or folder nav bar right click on this let's open with code okay so in here this where i got this from so i got it from here we have this home tag here aside from that i can now go in there and copy this from this one let's go to our razor component so so it's next power now pages are close this our close services now shared nav menu i can now go in here so you see we have only home here now there's a nav and that is a div nav item so i want to add a next item so i paste this here i can close this gap control k and d can rearrange it to all k and d 
now it is arranged already so you can see from here that we have a toggle drop down now if i click on that the bg here is secondary that is going to be the ash color now we have add product and if not i click on that it is navigating you to add product now this update product and the same thing add product because we are not done yet okay so then um, delete product to the same place okay but here we can give a place whereby a user can click or can delete this product and here can add product so maybe this is what we're going to do next by creating add um, delete and update product yeah so that is what we're going to do next now let's save this and let's see so we save this And now let's wait for the refresh to be done so we can see what we have here so you can see that it is refreshing but let's wait for it to get refreshed and now you have to see this drop down so as soon as i click on that i must have add update and delete with the various icons now these icons were set here so that is an icon this is an arrow circle top there is plus and this is trash so that's what circle so there's plus circle top and there's trash okay so if i click on add it is going to add page the same place update the same place delete the same place okay so we are not done with this two but we are done with the first one add product and you can see this product has now been or this component is now open or rendered all right so that is it for this uh, video this lesson uh next lesson you're going to talk about creating update and delete okay we talk about that in the next lesson thank you for watching and uh, make sure you subscribe give me thumbs up maybe if you are interested or if you like what i am doing here give it to me okay and i like it all right guys so i just paused the video and i tried to input or upload a lot of products so i did more and as you can see from here these are the back session that I just added. I can see with these are cooking um, tools. We have computers over here. Okay, so these are the things that I added to our e-commerce shop. Okay, so this video, the whole series now, is going to be a series one. We created a repository and we created um, a controller also a services to render the uh, controller to the client we created component that's a razor component to display the data as you see on the screen i think uh, i'll just end here and uh, this is going to be a series one because we have almost four episodes or four lessons in it now in lesson two or in episodes or series two we are going to talk about how do you perform edit and update okay and uh, we move forward as i said earlier on e-commerce is a big application for us to finish within just one hour or two hours um, so we have to add some features to enable it to make it look nice and responsive as well so for now that's what we have i believe you enjoyed been with me through the whole almost two hours and uh, well done congratulations this is the end of series one now series two is going to come soon so watch out for that okay as i said earlier on i'm going to leave a link to this source code on the screen um, i'll leave it under the description so you can just go in there and then grab the source code as well in case you want to make a comparison or to check where you got it wrong you can do that i'll make it available for you thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to subscribe and like and share i'm going to catch you up in the next video and that's going to be series two